Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I do apologize for the total lack of volume in this scene. Lol. Well, it is it is 4 a.m. Um tonight uh we set the scene uh on the set to the green uh where Jacob is sought to meet with uh a fellow philodox, Jason. And uh has set himself up on uh, probably like a local bench not too far away from the cairn. Uh, not in his normal uniform, but kind of casual, formal attire just because he's out and about today. Business outside the precinct. He's been busy. Uh, making different sacrifices to the spirits, namely reindeer, rat, falcon, and eagle. Uh, spilling forth the bones of the thunderworm that he and his pack, well, the thunderworms that he and his pack had slain, and had devoted a few of the smaller remains to Pegasus and Unicorn as a it's a thank you gift for the pack mates he'd been blessed with. Um, at this hour, Jason, for whatever reason, apparently can't sleep. So is probably just kind of wandering in circles. Although he spends enough time um, at the shrines with Ten Point, who is although still being dutiful is not being very forthcoming or perhaps quite as energetic in his company currently. Um, so he'll actually, since he can't sleep, probably go and start tidying shrines or doing something productive. He'd start at Unicorn, however. And quite likely run into Jacob. And I'm going to apologize to the viewers in advance because I'm going to mix up their names at least once during this scene. Yeah, kind of again. But uh, yeah, Jacob would just say hi. Um, he'd notice you. And uh, would walk on up to you. And Jason will, um, since it's, it's on Sept and he doesn't despite having had a few lessons, doesn't really have a particularly personal relationship with Jacob yet. Um, we'll pause what he is doing and, and drop to one knee. Um, although it's definitely not a particularly wolfy sign of submission. So. Greetings, Jacob Raya. Yeah. Hey there, Jason. Don't worry, you don't have to do that. You did that like the first three times, so you're good now. shrugs and gets back up off the ground and dusts off the leaves. It's good practice. True. Just before what brings you out at this hour? Ah. Uh, just some challenge. Uh, thanking uh, Unicorn for the pack mate I've been blessed with. He is definitely a fascinating individual. And a strong fighter. Um, very. Our pack recently killed three thunderworms. Somebody told me about thunderworms. They sounded ugly. They're extraordinarily dangerous. It normally takes several packs of lesser Karu to bring just one down. We took on one for each of us. are in your pack again? Three. Still. Well, I am given to understand that the Sept of the Green is the pointy end of the sword. Hmm. I actually, um, in the Sept of the Sacred Heart, a neighboring Sept, there is a Garu Arun named Thunderbane. His Afro challenge was to bring down a Thunderworm by himself. 
Well, it's I'm a long fun, ways away from being an Athro, so I don't suppose I have to worry about that just yet. No, it should just give you kind of an idea of the scale. These things house entire villages within their stomachs. That can't be a comfortable place to live. No, but anything of a worm is generally uncomfortable. Unless you are also of the worm, yes. Hmm, I can't imagine much more so, to be honest. Well, it sounds pretty gross. Because he's... But... It certainly is. My congratulations on the deed that you have accomplished. Thank you. It's just a small part of Chloe's Afro challenge, to be honest. I didn't realize that she'd started, but that's not really part of the teaching that she gives the cubs, so. Hmm. Can you tell me what she's... It's, uh... Um... I understand sometimes they're private or... She has to reclaim something important to her tribe, but I won't go too much into it. It's close challenge. If she wants to tell you, she'll tell you. Maybe she'll not. I mean, that seems stars. perfectly reasonable. I've been pretty caught up in all of our cup challenges. It hadn't even occurred to me, I'll be honest. I can imagine being a cop is, uh, well, I remember what it was like to be a cop is an interesting time. It's still pretty overwhelming. Mm. It's been almost two months now, which is mm. weird to think about. I was still adapting by the time I reached clear. I'm pretty sure I'll still be adapting by the time I reach I don't know <laughs> everything I mean it's true I've largely adjusted at this point but I st only to the point where I tend not to make an issue out of something that can't be resolved particularly quickly or easily. I still take issue of most of Garu society. It's not exactly as um, liberal as my little Californian heart might desire. But neither was the army, and I dealt with that, so. Something, something be the change you want to see. Pretty much. I mean, that's what this sept is. It's how the kinfolk bill got passed because of a group of three of us decided to say, fuck this shit, we're gonna change it. Which, yeah. I imagine getting it through to the rest of society is gonna be a much longer war. Well, we've got it to one sept. We're influencing others in Europe. I mean, that's a pretty strong start. Absolutely. We're building up our legitimacy as a sept, which is not easy considering the bone normas run this sept and they tend to be at the bottom of a totem pole, but... I, I did gather that they were... It seems to me like they're the only one anybody's even willing to talk negative things about like you can you can talk talk shit uh talk um i don't even know a good alternate word for that whatever anyway i you can you can insult people do insult them all the time but then i asked I asked someone to tell me, because, you know, all right, which tribe do I want? They're like, all right, well, what? tell me about your tribe. Okay, well, what are the drawbacks? And they're like, oh, can't do that. Spirits get mad at you. So, well, it's, why? Why? What's wrong with the Bonars? 
the Bonoras are... From what I've heard, they don't have a rite of passage. There is no trial to join the Bonoras. You are simply accepted. The, of course, that means they're very numerous and very prolific, which is how they've been able to survive and be the most numerous tribe. But the drawback to that is that you could interpret that as saying, well, they clearly have no standards, which is also true. It's just a negative take on it. Um, for particular I tribes. wouldn't go so far as to say that they don't have any standards. Uh, I suspect if you don't, well, if you don't shape up to some people's standards, they'll still beat your ass. But at this point, basically everybody wants to beat my ass. <laughs> well, my point is yeah, I, I keep hearing passage. about how you can die. Uh, my point being is that if you fail this passage to join another tribe, you would, um, you would ultimately be a perfect candidate for the Bonoras because of how they operate. They tend to attract a lot of dropouts by their very nature. Um, of course, there are the exceptional, like Mother Larissa. Uh, the Bornurza is diverse as any other tribe, of course, but it's simply a case of if you do, if you are going to find a screw up, they're just more likely to be in the Bornurza because they accept screw ups and that's fine. It's just that it means they're going to be less reliable because you'll ever find someone like Mother Larissa, who's a fucking genius, who is underappreciated. Or you're that woman find scares me. Like, uh... <laughs> She's interesting to me. She's oh, she's fascinating, but... but she's her her enigmatic nature is what makes her strong. She's unpredictable, and in a city, in an urban sept that is a constant war zone, that is perhaps the most powerful trait you can have. Yeah. We're not going anywhere, so. Mm. The ability that to operate sense. within reason and outside of it simultaneously is a very, very strong trait. Not one I possess. I am very linear. No. I'm a very literal thinker. Yeah. I mean, I think that's important, but... Sometimes it's also important not to be quite so literal. I would like to say I view things as they are, but it also means I can miss the forest for the trees sometimes. But it is something that I have largely improved upon. I wouldn't call it much of an issue for myself anymore. Rather now my conflicts are more How does it impact your duties as a philodox? Well sometimes a uh, philodox is very um, well obviously by its very nature it's a mentally based role, of course. It's not like an R rune where you're basically there to hit shit really hard. Obviously, there is the notion of leading uh, a strategy, but it is less mentally intensive uh, in general. A philodox's job is more or less entirely um, uh, mental intensity and social intensity. You have to resolve issues yeah, and solve I'm mysteries. working on that. One thing you have to understand as a fellow box is that is that you're not a police officer. That's just the one thing you do. You're a police officer, a negotiator, a diplomat, uh, a judge, and an executioner all in one. Well, I certainly heard about that part. Diplomat, not so much. But there haven't been a lot of scenarios where diplomacy was really required that I've been involved in just yet. Uh, 
Although I think I know, um, I, I don't know when it's going to happen, but um, Razvan uh, Raya has asked a couple of us to go and uh, speak to the glass walkers about getting some more tech savvy people to help put some wards around the sept. So I'm sure that will require some diplomacy. I actually know a glass walker who took over a certain worm tainted business in order to purify it. Could have a word with him about it. Hmm. Can't hurt to ask. I, I know he was thinking about going up to the group in the North Forest and talking to them. And... Uh, I think my point being, though, about. Uh these different roles is that it not only necessitates a diverse skill set but it influences how you act in the sense that not only do you have more leverage because of all this power placed on you it it also is basically means that you not only enforce the law but you interpret it and the litany is, as I'm sure you've noticed at this point, not exactly well defined. It is not like human laws where everything has a subsection or an article. Framework, definitely. In some instances, I think that's probably good. In many instances, well, there's a reason that laws are written to, well, actually, I guess a lot of them are written to make loopholes, but. You know what I mean. It is it is highly contextual. So you'll be dealing with the situation as you interpret it. Which means your word is basically law, unless someone higher ranked than you, as a philodox, basically says, well, fuck that. But unless you do something really dumb, I'm probably not going to do that. It means you'll be relying a lot more on precedent than human lawyers do which i need to of learn hmm. i i really are there are there records of noteworthy philodox precedent there is the silver record which contains many stories otherwise i'd suggest talking to the galliards the galliards are law keepers they tend to have a lot of stories i have a few of my own Right. Galliards are very useful for this purpose. They're basically that is walking, kind of their job, yeah. Walking record books, yeah. Um, and a ragabash is also quite useful. Is well, depending on the ragabash, I suppose. I haven't met very many good ragabashes surprisingly the best ragabash i've ever known has been a red talon and a glass walker i mean Both what defines a opposites. good ragabash the ability to make you question yourself well, and also your ability to also their ability to reinforce your own statements in a way that bypasses your own pride and ego on the matter I don't know, the, the ones I know so Ragabash. far do a pretty good job of it. <laughs> I don't consider many of the Ragabashes here to be particularly good. Shitstorm is a fairly interesting example. I don't really know them. Uh, Shitstorm's alright, but uh... I mean, he makes my life a pain in the ass, but I mean, that's kind of his intention, like his... His methodology is understandable. I won't speak on the ones that I do not care for. It is Why not? my... These conflicts go back f about around a year at this point, and I'd rather not strain the relationship any further. It's simply not. Nod slowly. 
it's not worth bringing up that conflict again. Let's just say me and Aiden have bad blood and leave it at that. Uh, if it's resolved, it's resolved. If there is something about anyone that you feel like I need to be not warned, but made aware of. Desmond. Oh my god, the sock puppets. Mm, that was probably the first time I've seen him be an effective ragabash. And, and Jason just kind of like stares upward and just shakes his head. Sock but puppets. Yeah. Ultimately, I think a philodox is about balancing your conscience with the law as it is intended to be. Uh, that makes sense. And that's not just an interpretation, that also lies in enforcement as well. It also comes into play in diplomacy. I think the reason you haven't encountered it much is simply because as a cub, you're not just you're not gonna be called upon that much. I, I don't have really the authority to pass them. judgment of much of anything right now. It's not just passing judgment. Your words could still lend weight to reinforcing a philodox's other judgment by saying, Yeah, that makes sense or whatever. Like people won't necessarily listen to you, but all the philodoxes being united on the matter, even cubs, would mean something at least. But you wouldn't be sent off sense. to negotiate with another sept, for example. No, I only really they, they, they would assumedly take it as an insult. Mm, oh, very much so. It would be uh, some would consider a cause for war. The more hardliners, but um, the it comes into play in diplomacy in the sense that you basically have to decide how much you're willing to give up, and that often includes enforcement of the law. My agent challenge very much revolved around this. There was an investigation revolving around to... I can't say too much because it is quite literally classified, but there were two parties in conflict. There was an obvious answer. There was... A less obvious an answer. easy answer. The easy answer was ultimately the one that ended up resolving the issue, even though I figured out the correct answer, because the correct answer ultimately ended up being irrelevant at the end of the day. That was the problem. Basically, there was a challenge, and the challenge had not been answered, and ultimately the challenge was eventually answered, because the issue escalated to a point where I had to enforce yeah, that challenge be. when I really did not want to. And I basically had to put aside my own conscience and feelings on the matter to resolve this issue because otherwise a lot of Gara were going to die for poor reasons. So what you're saying is that sometimes the job of the Philodox is not justice, but the health of the nation. Basically. I've had to sacrifice a lot of who I am. That said, don't let someone take that last percentile. If you give up who you are, then there's no point in you being a philodox at all. You still need a conscience. You still need individual beliefs. Otherwise, you're just a robot for the nation, and that's not going to help it. That's not going to save it. You can only reinforce a framework by constantly testing it. Because if you don't test it, you don't know what needs reinforcing. Hmm. This is why Ragabash and a Philodox actually work quite well together, because to strengthen a framework, a good way is to understand its opposite's antithesis. To understand what makes your enemy alluring allows you to strengthen yourself and your own allies. Nods. It makes it all makes sense. Of course. It doesn't all make him happy, but it all makes world. sense. No. I I think it goes out saying, um 
expect to not always be right, even if people say you're right. I made a decision I considered right at the time. I didn't really, that's the problem. I didn't, but I thought it was in the best interest of the nation. I was wrong and I regret that decision. For the record, I'll be completely honest about this because if I lie to you, that's, well, just as dishonorable. Like, you know, if you can't face your own failings, then, you know, you may as well just throw yourself at the worm and make it quick. Um, to put it bluntly, I had someone crucified at the urgings of a Vagaru. I basically surrendered to mob justice like a weakling and a coward. All it was was an attempt to commit it. to prejudice and hatred. They did a big fuck up. A really big fuck up. They basically pissed, they basically broke the Septotum's ban which endangered the set directly. Um, the problem being is that the people who were basically urging me to do this basically hated Metis and the perpetrator was a Metis. He had done this entirely by accident. Now, he had attempted to weas weasel his way out of the punishment with me by being honest and then immediately backtracking and basically bullshitting me, which didn't help his case. He was being honest for the purposes of getting out of a punishment. And then when I pressured him on certain topics, he basically contradicted himself. Well, he outright contradicted himself and lied to me. Um, but he didn't deserve the punishment he got. I had basically... You think there would have been be. something more fitting for the crime? I did three separate punishments when there really only needed to be one, and I allowed myself to be manipulated by parties with malicious intentions. And I simply tricked myself into believing that was in the interest of the nation when it was actually only in the, in the interest of a particular political agenda. As a philodox, you'll be very heavily involved in nation politics. It's just the nature of a role. Legislation and politics go hand in hand after all. They always have. Hmm. So it means sometimes you're not going to make many friends when you have, you basically have to make the hard decisions. And a lot of the time, your judgments will not be well liked because people do not like the hard truth, or they do not like what is right, or they do not like it because it goes against their own politics. It comes with the territory. If you could go back and redo that punishment, what would you have done instead? I would have simply satired him and left it at that. And I'd actually sat at him properly. The bright itself was an embarrassment. I didn't even do it correctly. That was how blind I was. I didn't even commit to the punishment. So correctly. I've I was... I've heard, I've heard of the rite of satire. And I know it's bad. But what? How does it work? What does it do? Well, the Rite of Satire itself, basic, it's a severe punishment for how it sounds. Basically, you, you satirize someone. Um, you, make them, you make them a joke. You make them you, a you joke. You don't tease them, so. you make them a joke. Yeah, you demean everything that they are and that they stand for, and in doing so, they lose their rank. Which is to a Garu extremely, not just humiliating, but is it, that the, their, their standing in society is permanently lessened. It is not like a stone of scorn where the punishment is, well, it is permanent, but it is ultimately just a setback. The right of satire permanently puts you down to a rank beneath that of what you were. You are less and it cannot be regained. considered you equals. Yes, over time, but it is a much larger hurdle 
than lesser punishments. And not just that, but it drains you of power, gifts that you once could use, you can no longer use because you can no, you are no longer at the rank in which you could learn them or use them before. For example, and that have a gift would be enough to satisfy the sept totem. He'd probably have to be sent on a mission, and he ultimately died on that mission. I, yes. it, it, this, I know the problem a large part of involved the spirit. Sorry. No, I was just saying. I know a large part of what we do. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's that. Okay. Um, part of the, you're right in that part of the problem with this punishment is that it involved a spirit. Not normal. It's unusual. Um, particularly our septotem. So we had to make sure we got this right. There are a lot of ways we could have gone about this that didn't involve basically destroying this guy's life and annihilating, well, basically just engaging in... Jason kind of hesitates and goes, is crucifixion deadly? I I'd assumed so, to, but... Not to us and not to a meta. Jesus. Held to the cross with silver spikes. Jason looks kind of horrified. Boring. And I see you still have your conscience. That's good. For a good many months, I was afraid I'd lost a mine. I remember being out in the Amazon and almost leaving my pack because the way certain topics were approached literally made me want to vomit. That issue's resolved now, but that used to be a real problem for me. Well, I'm glad it's resolved. Mm, the way metas are treated is still absolutely atrocious, but we're all united in that we're trying to fix it. Ironic that the most prominent meta concept would probably never accept it. But ultimately her acceptance is not worth the suffering of thousands of or thousands of other metas. That and simply ten point is indoctrinated. I will make no pretense as to Otherwise, she has been brainwashed. Pretty ruthlessly. But I'm going off on a tangent and getting into my own personal issues. Speaking of personal shit, how's Desmond been treating you? I've been hearing some worrying things. Hello. Sorry about that. My net went down. What did you last hear? Uh, just take it from the top because I forgot. Lol. Well, all right then. I suck. Um, 
I know a lot of what we do um, involves dealing with spirits and working within their parameters for what is acceptable and what is appropriate, um, not only in terms of behavior, but in terms of the deals that we make. Mm. How would you recommend starting to get a handle on that kind of thing, you know, for, because I'm, I'm sure people in the future will upset spirits and, you know, everything else. So. Well, when our septotum was angered, um, I immediately consulted basically every relevant fiage on the sept. If it involves a spirit, you want a fiage around. It's what they're good at. It's what they do. It's what they know. So being able to tailor your response to a Fiat's advice is important because every spirit is different and they don't work like mortals do. They will want recompensation in a different form than what we would expect. Usually it will involve chimnich of some kind, which is basically Learning. what we scale of what's fair and what's not fair. Hmm. But what a spirit considers fair and unfair is different to what we consider fair and unfair and that thing varies from spirit to spirit. For example, my tribe, my tribal spirits are very um, heavy on honor. If you're an honorable Garu, they'll consider you a friend. If you're a dishonorable Garu, they'll consider you a straight enemy. But a spirit oh. of the Shadow Lords would perhaps be more inclined to test your strength, or a Fenris, Fenris spirit totem would as well, but in different ways. They would care less about honor and more about different virtues, different Chimneys, different items, different archetypes, different natures, personalities. So you'll basically have to tailor it to each spirit. And the more powerful the spirit, the bigger it is, the more you're going to want to fiage around. For small shit, you can probably, or yeah, for small spirits, you can probably you could probably make do without. I would still advise a fiage around. Um. But you could probably get away with not having one. For more prominent spirits, particularly totem spirits, pack totems, that sort of thing, a fiage is basically necessary. You could, again, try and make do without one, but at that point you're taking a significant risk and one that is unnecessary. So basically, consult with the fiages, see what they suggest. See if it's palatable, because obviously if they're suggesting something that is not in line with the law, or you think is an unnecessary punishment, don't just go along with whatever, you know, each side says. You have to consider what you believe to be correct as well, and what is acceptable and responsible, and you can, you'll need to see how you can... tailor that approach with what the spirit wants and Makes again sense. that's why you want to fiage around because they can help you strike that balance they can mm. they can they can say well we can't do this great spirit but we can do this and we'll add this in exchange for not being able to do the other thing but yeah it's basically a team effort at that point which is probably one of the bigger lessons to take away from everything i suppose is None of us works alone. Exactly. Gyro are not meant to be alone, really. And one thing that is important about Philodox is that they are meant to be team players to some extent or another. We are... We are... One of our titles is actually the Mediators. It is one of the first titles we ever had. So we are expected to mediate. We are expected to play referee and make sure everyone gets along to some extent everyone's working together if people are starting shit then you need to resolve those disputes not like petty bullshit but if it's starting to affect the sept at large if it's starting to accept how they 
operate how effective they are, then you're going to need to have a word of them and say, look, this is affecting your capability to aid this app. You need to resolve this in some form or another. And a lot of the time that'll simply come down to a challenge. And you'll need to referee that challenge. I remember one time a guy who challenged my ability to provide a fair challenge and I basically had to kick his ass. The so I get to that, do a little bit of everything, I suppose. Philodoxes do do a little bit of everything to an extent. Obviously they have their specialties, but they are perhaps, in my opinion, the most diverse of Garu because they will have to talk to spirits, they'll have to talk to people, they'll have to issue judgment, they'll have to lead, they'll have to mediate. And because they deal in matters of the law and they enforce it, that also means they deal with corruption and fighting it. And so we have a little bit of our own in between us as well. I myself can be a little bit not. less reliant on Philodox gifts in regards to hunting corruption. The Silver Fangs are already very adept at this. As long as you but, find it reliably. Uh, oh, yes. The Silver Fangs, I think, have a reputation for their most powerful gifts. I suppose it is one of the perks of being royalty. Jason just grins at him. <laughs> Unfortunately, that does mean we trend towards elitism at times, but times are changing, and so is our tribe. Well, that's good then. Yeah, it doesn't mean we don't have our... Well, every tribe has their kind of bad eggs, but... I think it's strange. For a long while, I think our tribe wasn't changing, at least when I look at our history. But suddenly we've lurched into action. It's usually changes incremental. But for the nation, it seems to come in great leaps and then just stops for a hundred years and then jumps forward again. It also has a tendency to jump back every now and then, which is frustrating. But as a philodox, you can call that shit out. Just make sure not to get into a fight you can't win. You might be a great lawyer, but that doesn't mean the Aaron's going to look the other way when you start talking shit. My modem is mad at the universe and my internet connection has not been good. For which I do apologize. It's fine. But yeah, um, Jason looks very thoughtful. Anyway, um, how have things been between you and Desmond? I've been hearing some worrying things about how he's been treating the cubs. And Jason sighs. Honestly, I think Desmond is very used to getting his own way. And to some extent, I think he takes it a little too personally when he doesn't. He's a very, very traditional Fenrir, which frustrates me because he is not really, he was never, a lot of people join tribes from which their families um, are descended from. It feels like he's very desperate to prove himself. But regardless, I think you are right, which is strange to me because I remember first meeting him when he first changed and 
he was just like me really he was just a kid who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong genes and it literally took him three months to fully join the fucking hype train and just start believing in all this bullshit without even questioning it he's a very traditional Fenrir in that he's very proud very forceful and that tends to trend itself towards a lot of conflict. Now, he is also very fair in his own way. He's pretty much always deferred to me. Like, no questions asked, but that's kind of the problem. He takes his own set of values very seriously. The problem is he can't see outside those values. It's when no. Rajan ragabashed him, he saw it as an insult rather than as a lesson. I mean, it was with fucking sock puppets, for Christ's sake. It's not like, I mean, Aiden was pretty aggressive towards the end, and I think that's probably the part which soured that. But ultimately, I'm not Aiden sure it would have made a difference. Him, but he wasn't. Hmm. Ultimately, I would have backed Aiden on that over over Desmond, and Desmond is, well, I mean, I don't like Aiden, and Desmond is a philodox like me, so that's kind of, I mean, I'm an ultra fucking liberal, particularly for my tribe, so I guess my word doesn't really count for much when I say that's a weird exception, but, you know, because I do that shit all the time, but I think the point being is that he's taking it too personally and he's not handling it as well as he could have also he can't yes. actually force you to join a pack like he literally can't do that that's a pack is literally defined as the family you choose oh i'm aware so yeah him doing that shit is um foolish like it doesn't make any sense he he should know he can't do that He's very possessive in many respects. And I think partially, I think, I think partially it's because he wants family. And the Cubs right now are family. We, we all came into this approximately together. We've we've been learning together. We're like siblings. I think he needs that. And the rejection is very emotional. And he That's doesn't very deal very logically with his emotions. Who does? But mm. his reaction to most problems right now seems to be violence. That's a very thoughtful response. I can see why you're a philodox. You'll do well with that attitude. That reason yeah, is I've been correct. I've been considering changing my major. I don't think engineering is going to do me much good anymore, but psychology might. I do have a limited understanding of psychology. I've been studying on it. Oh, see, Jacob has a psychology dot. Not even that useful, but fuck it. It is a useful tool to have. People don't really like it when you psychoanalyze it, them, but it's a very good tool for leveraging and pressuring them. Right. I mean, I. it doesn't usually help to do it to their face, but if it helps you understand what's going on in their head, then it, maybe it'll help you work them around to your point of view on something or certainly helps with negotiations 
Well, yeah, and psychology is ultimately in many ways about diagnosing mental illness so that you can cure it. Well, I mean, in that it's so, a medical you know, practice, yes. Yeah, being able to understand someone's mind allows you to correct Change it when it. things go awry. Hmm. Which is also kind of creepy when I think about it, but if you're the sort of cynic who believes that all communication is manipulation. Well, that's one way to look at it, I suppose. Into it. Hmm. Yeah. Ultimately, that's kind of what you're going to be dealing with. Uh, just, I guess, try and keep what what I said in, in mind, I suppose. it's. Uh, I know it was very long-winded, but I... It's strange. Philodox is something that really can't be summed up in a few words. I could sum up a lot of, like, Arun, Vyr, Dragabash, I could probably sum up pretty easily, but I find that Philodox and Galliards tend to be a bit more diverse and complex, so there's more nuance to it. But considering you seem to deal in nuance, you should do fine. I try. It uh, sometimes takes me a while to pick stuff up, but mm. I guess, <sighs> I'm working on that too. Kind of mm. That's good. I'd say the only thing definitive I would say you should definitely always, always keep an eye on is your honor as a fellow dog. So it's basically everything. Similar to how glory is everything to an our own honor, is everything to a fellow dog. We're expected to uphold our word. When we make judgments, if we don't keep to them, if we don't keep to our precedent that we set, then our judgments will not be trusted, and ultimately they will eventually be challenged and ignored. So you need to be willing to remain consistent. A philodox must be consistent. They can change, but there must be... You can't just do a sudden 180 on something. It must be, there must be a reason for doing so. There must be a logical, reasonable explanation. It doesn't always need to be made public, but it sometimes helps if people know, know why you're making this judgment. And to be fair, when you make a judgment, you should probably explain why you're doing it. It helps. You know, if someone doesn't know, yeah, if you don't, if someone doesn't know why the fuck you're doing something, it's unlikely they can learn from it. And if you explain the rationale behind a judgment, then in the future, when similar situations arise, it can be applied without you. Mm. I'll say this is a philodox, though. Don't take any loophole defense lorry bullshit, to be honest. There's a lot of people who Google lawyer aren't actually good lawyers at all. They just think they're good lawyers. Accept valid arguments, but don't accept the whole, well, this doesn't do this, because there's this little old loophole. Litany doesn't really have that. Litany is contextual. The litany doesn't really have loopholes. To... Yeah, don't, it's don't too accept, big of a framework don't accept for excuses that. and Yeah, don't accept excuses and bullshit. Ultimately, we're here to hold people accountable. And if people try to weasel out sense. their own responsibilities, then they need to be they need to be brought down to earth. Like, the, the nation is already self-righteous and proud enough as it is. We don't need to add to that. Makes sense. I've seen us justify a lot of bullshit. Everything from getting out of guard duty to fucking genocide. Yeah, I've uh, heard about that. Uh, there's more, like, you think you've heard. There's a nope, place called the, the Atrocity. the Dun Mother was pretty, um, pretty succinct about that. Mm. Mm. There's a place called the Atrocity Realm. It's called that place for a reason. Oh, well, okay. That one hasn't been brought up yet. I'll have to ask. Hmm. But it's 
despite its horrible name and the things it shows you, it is of value because it shows us the mistakes we're not ready to admit. But Matt said, I wouldn't advise going there. One, it's difficult to reach. Two, um, unless you prepare yourself mentally for it, you're going to be in for a rough day. Mm, It is. Anyway. Yeah, I guess that's my uh, old man Jacob lecturing you. I'm not even sure I'm as old as you, to be honest. Um, quite possibly not. I've been told I'm a veritable geezer. Yeah, we tend to change when we're in our teens. I changed at the age of uh, 20, 21. I'll be making 23 this year. I'm actually amazed they allowed someone as young as me to run a fucking police precinct. Jason's expression is slightly strained. But hey, I guess I'm just that good at my job. Almost you take everyone the, here uh, is younger than I am. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Unlucky. But, uh, Hey, Lisa can hold her over people. When you're of rank, you can say I'm a geezer. Fuck you. Yeah, I just had to make it that far. I'm an actual elder. <laughs> How old do I have to be for that? Um, pretty fucking old. It's kind of the most high. It's the highest rank a guru can realistically expect to achieve. Yeah. There is only one other, and really only two or three Garu ever reached that rank in an entire generation. Oh, life goals. Yep. Being a legend is pretty fucking badass. I mean, if nothing else, you'll go down in history as one of the greatest Garu in all time. But uh, life goals. Not dying. To be honest, if you're not dying, you're winning half the time. I will keep that in mind. Yeah, don't rush off to die. Don't make reckless decisions. It doesn't help anyone. Probably true. I would like to jump in to uh, gain the glory, but the direct approach is not always the effective one. And in a city where we have to deal with bureaucracy, legalities, the police on a regular basis, it's often ineffective to take the the direct approach. It's sometimes necessary and sometimes needed, and I've been there when it had to be done, but I mean, there was a time when there were groups of Pentex. No, you wouldn't say Pentex. Sorry, he doesn't know who Pentex are, really. Good, because um, neither do I. They're, they're a bunch of uh, basically worm tainted um, soldiers from a worm, uh, what I call a WIC, a worm infested corporation known as um, Full Force Security. Um, they murdered a bunch of people, and I had them arrested and sent to jail. Never had to do anything. Sometimes it is nice to uh, let other people do some of the It's It's the perk of having access. I'm probably the only person in this entire set who actually has any real influence in human society. I mean, I'm more influential than the glass hawkers here, and I think that's fucking saying something. Probably, yeah, given what I understand about the tribe. Mm, They're basically the go-to for mortal shit. And here I am, basically showing them up at every opportunity. Not intentionally, it's just something I was good at, so I did it. 
I was already a cop, so I'm like, well, why not just continue being a cop and get all the perks of being a cop? It does come with certain drawbacks, like I actually have a work schedule. I can't be around all the time, but it means when there's a fucking riot squad about to hit the steps, I can basically tell them to not do that and just avoid the enormous clusterfuck and veil breach that would occur if that were to happen. That is very helpful. Yeah. Having friends in the media, politics, legal service, industry, it's all very valuable. It's things we're not very good at, so being able to get a handle on that is pretty good. Just be careful. Uh, leeches, vampires, tend to infest mortal spheres is how they exert themselves with others of their kind, it seems. So they're better at blending than we are. Yeah, I mean, we have rage, they don't. And they have powers that can control minds. Oh, that's reassuring. That sort of thing. They have a power which can literally make you believe they're not even there. It's pretty intimidating. So why haven't they killed all of us? Uh, because it's not that simple. They have their tricks, but they still have limitations, just as we do. They don't want to take us in a head-on fight, because in a head-on fight we're likely to win. The average vampire, which has been embraced for a few months, is nothing to even a cub. But you take on one which has been around for a few centuries, and by god you're going to want to pack for that shit. At least, probably two. There was a time when the striders numbered six. We had the wormfo down there as well. And we still couldn't take the bugger out. I wasn't a part of a pack then, I was a cub. But they had like five, six guys of like Foster and rank and above wailing on his fucking vampire and they couldn't bring him down. Because he was just that old and powerful. But ultimately vampires are weak to basically, I mean, if you want to kill a vampire, don't take it on the night. Just take it on find the night. Find out where it sleeps. Yeah, find where it sleeps, set fire, set fire to its place, or just open the curtains. There'll be ash within seconds. But yeah, oh, a uh, conversation. speaking of things getting set fire to, um, I know I mentioned it before, but I did want to make sure that I had all of the paperwork for my insurance claim on my house um, looked right. If um, Would you mind looking over it for me before I file it? Sure thing. And if you've got I know that there's shit, probably police it. reports that need to be done and I don't I don't know if the missing persons report on Richard ever really got anything done with it. So having it on record will be useful. And can you I make can sure it got filed? Be, I can ensure that it'll get filed and I can even turn it into a priority if you want. They're not going to find a body. I Fair enough. have good reason to believe that um, Megadon Corporation collected it. Shit. I'm sorry. Um, well, it, in some respects, it means The police are not looking for me, specifically, um, because when the fire department would have responded to my house fire, there wouldn't have been anything suspicious to find. And unless, unless someone's reported you missing, it's possible that if they went to your house and were never able to contact you, you might be put on a missing persons list. I can deal with that, though. I can have all that. Oh, yeah, stuff I'm, I'm not missing. I've got my phone. I've got, oh, cool. I've got all my 
you know, credit cards and IDs and whatever replaced. So okay. I'm findable. Well. well. If there's anything you need, please wise, I'll handle it for you. Um, I do have a couple of friends in the media as well, but yeah. Anyway, I should probably get going. Uh, thanks for the chat. I really appreciate it. I was hoping to run into you sooner, to be honest. But yeah, I... Recently. I'd been meaning to spend more time with you talking about Philodox stuff, but your schedule, my schedule, well... I don't really have a schedule, but I still seem to be busy all the time anyhow. Oh yeah, when you're a cop, you're busy like, well, learning shit, doing mundane chores and stuff, and as an agent, I'm kind of wandering about from set to set doing all this insane, crazy stuntman bullshit. Yeah. But yeah. I'll see you around. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he'll, uh, he'll Wave them off. And uh, if we're good, I think we can call the scene there. I think so. Thank you, player, for playing. Thank you, watchers, for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>